So sitting in this hangar behind me is one of the cheapest airplanes that I could find to buy on the internet. And like some of my worst decisions I've ever made, and some of my best. Wow. I bought it sight unseen. And that was a little over a year ago. Welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. So it turns out the airplane I was searching for was pretty much right around the corner. The Kipox 1 was born in a small town in Boise, Idaho in 1984. The Kipox Model 1 is a lightweight two-place aircraft with a gross weight of 850 pounds, a typical empty weight of 426 pounds, and a typical useful load of 424 pounds. That means that a Kipox 1 can carry its own weight. Usually it's powered by a 64 horsepower Rotax two-stroke, two-cylinder 532. The Model 1 cruises at 65 knots and has a stall speed of 31 knots. With excellent stall performance and the ability to operate from short and unimproved airfields. In 1984, there was only six models of Kit Fox 1 built. Since then, there's thousands flying and operating today. So now all we gotta do is get this thing home. How are we going to get this thing home if we can't fly it? Well, let me show you. This is like one of the coolest things about a Kit Fox is liter literally the wings are held on by a pin and they swing back and rotate back into place. So that way you can pretty much just throw it up on a trailer and transport it wherever you want. You don't have to fly it, but I'll bet you this little airplane is a ton of fun to fly and we're gonna find out. All right, so we got the kit box all loaded up. Now it's time to head back to Rebuild Rescue Hangar. So if you guys have never seen a Kit Fox before, this is pretty much a snowmobile engine. Not pretty much, I mean, it really is a snowmobile engine. They had this same engine in snowmobiles. It just has a gear reduction drive unit. It is a twin cylinder. It is liquid cooled. So it's a little bit different than what you're gonna find on you know today's standard airplane. They're usually all air cooled, but it has a little radiator here one of the cool things about that is if you want to, you can put a regular heat exchanger inside the Kit Fox, which is really neat. Um, a little bit more dependable in, in my opinion than, you know, an air exchange that comes from the exhaust that can be dangerous. If you get a crack in the exhaust, you can get uh, carbon monoxide poisoning and fall asleep while you're flying, which is not a good thing. I see that the wooden prop here, I was looking at it, almost looks like it has a crack starting here. So. We'll, uh, we'll inspect that a lot further um, and obviously make sure that's safe. But it, it sat for a long time. Somebody did fly this at one time. I'm not sure who. If you look down here at the tires, I mean, it's got, it's got a 20 inch tire on this little airplane. So it, it really is made for off field stuff like grass strips. I think the wheel is a Douglas wheel off of a go-kart. So they steal some parts from all kinds of different places. If you look at the tubes here, the tubes are, well, my finger's bigger than this tube, but it's all chromoly welded. Other than that, it's cloth and it's wood. It's got two fuel tanks. It's got one in each wing and I don't know, you might burn two gallons an hour or something. So it's really cheap to fly. Some of these are pull start, like the, the Starlight, do you guys remember that we found in the basement of a garage, we're still waiting on paperwork, is back there. That one has a pull start. I think it has the same engine, 
that this has. So this does have electric starter on it, which is so much nicer than the pool start. It's back here. If you look at it, the exhaust is a little rusty. It's, it's a little dirty, but it's really gonna clean up well. But we have a ton of inspecting to do before we fly this for sure. This is one of the first series. So for the size of the airplane, the wings are actually really big. And the fold out feature, which you guys saw, you can fold these wings up and throw it on a trailer. Say you want to go out to like Utah or something. You obviously don't want to fly this all the way to, U all the way to Utah. So you can throw it up in a trailer and cruise out to Utah and, you know, check out all the different flying that you can do there and, and all the different canyons and stuff. It's a really light airplane. I mean, it's 800, I think 850 pounds, 900 pounds. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really light. If you get into some winds, you better be paying attention because you're going to have to be putting some inputs into it or, you know, you're going to be all over the place. The suspension on these, and I can't see it from up here, but I can see it, I think, from down here. And this is just like the ghost or freedom they call them bungees it's just like a cord on a on a bungee strap and it's wrapped around here and that's how this suspension works but we're out here and it's like really windy and the whole airplane is rocking all over the place somebody spent some time and a little bit of money on the panel i mean it's it's got a, a garmin uh, 196 in it it's also got a garmin gtx 327 Got a Narco Com here, a 120 TSO. And of course we have our airspeed uh, VSI, altimeter. We got some exhaust temp in there for a two stroke, very important. We got water temp, which is a little different. It also does have 139 hours on it. We got two controls. We got a mic switch over there on the pilot side and there's our pedals and we got brakes on the left side only. Fuel on and off switch. I'm not sure what this switch is here. So I'm pretty much, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm about 225 pounds and I'm six foot. I haven't tried to get in this yet. I'm gonna try to get in here and see if I actually fit. I'm not sure how you would get in one of these either. All right, so, so I'm in. So it's a good thing that this crossbar up here uh, gives you some headroom and actually give me a little more headroom on the right side. So this is the flap control here, which if you guys look as I actuate that, that controls the flaps. I'm gonna try to get over on the pilot side here. Yeah, so when you're, when you're in here, you are definitely in here. Uh, it's not, it's not as, bad as I thought it was gonna be though. It's it's really not that bad. Is there room for one more? Um so so oh yeah I could squeeze so you are definitely not <laughs> squeezing in here bro. Dude, that is crazy. So this is like women only. <laughs> women Pilot only. and and women only. Uh, to have control, like full control, I'm a little bit I don't know how that works. I don't know how much you really need uh, as far as controlling one of these, but you figure if I keep my knee over, if I keep my knee over on this side, I almost feel like I need to fly with my hand under here. Now this has really thick cushions and the same with the back. It's a really nice, nice seat though. What looks like uh, fuel cutoffs here and then it's got these disconnects right here too. These disconnects are to disconnect that tank, like a quick disconnect. The one on this side here though was, I saw was broken. So right there's the gauges for the, the right tank. And then over on the other side, there's the gauge for the left tank if you wanna know how much fuel you have. So I think the Kit Fox 7s, or I think by Kit Fox 5, they made the fuselage a little bit wider and a little bit deeper. I really got to go check one out because for me, that's a little tight. It's flyable. I think I could fly it by myself. With someone else, it might be a little bit difficult unless it was like just a, a really small person. But again, I'm a big guy. So, uh, but I, again, I'm actually surprised I actually fit in there. Like looking at it, I didn't think I was going to.
A couple things that you need for any, any engine to start. I don't care whether it's an airplane, it's a boat, it's a car, it's a train. Well, maybe a train might be a little bit different. You need air, you need fuel, and you need spark. If you don't have those three things, it's not gonna start. You also need compression, you also need to make sure the timing's right, but even with really low compression, things will normally start. If the timing's off, it won't, but that does have to do with the spark. That's some of the things we're gonna check. We're also gonna go ahead, we're gonna get the coil out, and we're gonna coil up anything that might need loosened up. That way it has a chance to work, you know, so we definitely gotta get the penetrant out. So it, it's really windy out here today and all we can hear is all these doors squeaking. So I wanna see if I can quiet some of them down. We're out here, I, I was getting some curl on here and honestly it's flying back in my face and the whole kit box is kind of going all over the place and it's really windy. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get it back in in the hangar, A, so you guys don't hear all this wind noise and also so I don't keep getting a face full of croil. So it's, we have like 24 knot winds right now. I think I could take this thing and point it that way and pretty much hover out here right now. Should we try that? Maybe we try that. Can we hover, we'll tie it down. No, we better not do that. So the first thing we'll do, we'll, we'll pop the spark plugs out. We'll go ahead and we'll check for corrosion in here and just check and see what the inside of the cylinders look like. Nobody knew how long it's been since this has been flown or started. So I'm really not sure on the total condition of this. Why does that have like a huge, I've never seen one. That's all right. I got a backup. And then we'll check the fluid on the gear drive. So that's a good sign. It looks like somebody had put a bunch of anti-seize on there. This so plug actually looks pretty good. Yeah, and if you look, it's a B8ES. So this is literally a normal two-stroke motorcycle spark plug. I used to run these in some two-stroke race cars I had all the time. So I'll put one and two over here. <clears throat> So not only does the, do the threads look good, but the plug, the burn of the plug looks good. And on a two stroke engine, that is so important, but it looks pretty much perfect. The heat range looks perfect. Yeah, so that's, that's a good sign. A good sign of how it was running. I don't know how it would run right now, but. All right, that should be bottom dead center. We should be able to look right inside there. Yeah, so let's grab our scope. I'm gonna get these out of the way. I'm just gonna check one cylinder at one time. And that is exactly what you wanna see. So that's the cross hatch of the cylinder walls and it looks brand new. Now on the Hobbs meter, it shows a hundred and some hours. Now I do have a ton of information of books and stuff from this, but I have a feeling this might be a hundred and some hours since new engine. Uh, one of the things that you will see down there, if you look down and you see those ports, again, this is a two stroke engine. So a two stroke engine, it has uh, ports like piston ports, uh, instead of having any type of a valve or anything like that. So uh, there's a lot less things to go wrong, uh, basically with it. Really good, that's in like, honestly, that's like, I didn't expect it to be in that good a shape. Yeah, it's, it's in like perfect condition. You can, hey, we can even go down in one of the ports here. <laughs> really good, if you guys look on the top of the piston even, there's not even any carbon on there. I have a feeling that this engine has 130 some hours on it since new. Cylinder one looks really good. The plugs look really good. I mean, there's not even a reason to clean those plugs. They're really that clean. Um, I wasn't gonna take these wires off all at the same time, but I am gonna do it. 
uh, just because I want to check and, and make sure we have spark as well. So I want to have these plugs out when I check when it sparks. I'm just going to put them on different parts of the engine here. Hopefully this cylinder looks as good as the front one does. Again, it's got anti-seize on there, which is a good sign. Somebody was taking care of this. The burn that's a little bit richer, if you look at the color of the electrode there, it's a little bit richer, but you can also tell on a two stroke and a four stroke, if you look on this electrode that bends around here, there's a heat mark on there. So you see that heat mark, a perfectly burning plug, that heat mark is gonna be right about at the middle of the bend of the electrode. That tells you, it's a way to like read the plug. It tells you how hot this electrode is when it's running the engine. This is running good. It's a tiny bit on the rich side. Um, you could basically lean this out a little bit more. Uh, the one thing on this engine versus an airplane engine, it is these carburetors, they're, they're set where they're set at with the jetting. There's no way really to adjust them from the cockpit. So once you start it, you got throttle, you don't have to worry about any of your mixture, any of that stuff, which is nice. But then sometimes it is nice to be able to lean it out a little bit too. Oh, that is so nice. It is perfect cross hatch. There's no rust in there. There's barely any carbon. Great, great condition. This thing looks really good. Perfect cross hatch. You can see a little bit of the uh, uh, croil mixed with the anti-seize stuff running down the cylinders there. But wow, I mean, it's brand new, it's brand new. This airplane barely has any time on it. I mean, I think it was a hundred and some hours. Um, and I think, I'm pretty sure we're gonna find that this engine is an original hundred and some hour engine. So there is all kinds of life left in this thing. The cylinders look great. So let's move on to, let's hook these spark plugs up and let's check them one at a time and make sure that each coil is firing and make sure that the whole ignition system works right. Because we know we have, uh, everything in here is good. So we just gotta make sure it's got spark now. Uh, we'll check the carburetors, make sure they're opening, check the air filter assembly, um, and we'll know it has air. And then we'll just have to go ahead and check and make sure that we have some fuel. And then I, I, I think we can try to fire it up. So I'm not sure which one of these switches in here is ignition. The plan's gonna be to switch them all on. It's even got some battery power left. All right, so the master's turned on, it's got power. Did the avionics? Um, I didn't turn the avionics on. We'll get to that a little later. Oh, and there's one thing that I forgot to mention. Some of you guys might be thinking, you know, what about the crankcase oil? What about the oil for the engine? You didn't check that. So it is a two stroke engine. And because it's a two stroke engine, it doesn't have any crankshaft oil. The oil that would be in the bottom end of the engine on a two stroke, actually it gets lubricated by the fuel. So there is either a premix, which I'm not sure if this has a, a premix tank or if this actually has, you know, where you got to mix it before you put the fuel in, kind of like a weed whacker. But, um, but yeah, so you don't have to have any oil here. We do get to check the drive oil though on, on the front of here, which is, uh, I think it's an 80 or a 90 weight gear fluid. So yeah, before you post something in the comments about me not checking the crankshaft oil or the engine oil. Hmm. I'm not sure what this is. I'm gonna hit the switch and see if the starter works. Are we everything clear out of there? Yeah. All right, so I'm thinking these are the mag switches here. It did spin over, but it's definitely spinning over pretty slowly. And that's with the spark plugs out. I doubt it would have enough battery power to turn this over if the plugs were in. So now I just gotta figure out why I don't see any spark. Oh, right there, we have spark. So I just saw that it did have some spark right there. All right, so we do have spark on that one cylinder. 
It's a little bit of a weak spark though. Like, so that spark is, uh, it was like a red spark. You wanna see a blue spark out of a spark plug. So each cylinder right now is getting spark, but I'm only getting spark from these two coils here. I'm not getting any spark from, from this coil or this coil, which is what I would consider the secondary coil. But I do see a little bit of corrosion on the contacts and, and, and some of the wires, more so over on this one. So I don't trust it as much, but I do know that all you need is spark on one of the plugs for it to run. For it to fly, you know, we wanna make sure that's good. But the other thing too that you wanna do before you start this is you definitely wanna make sure that when you switch those coils off, that it cuts the spark. Because I haven't worked on this before and I don't know if, I mean, maybe the switches aren't even hooked up and I go to shut it down, something happens when we fire it up. We don't want it like taken off without being able to emergency shut it down. But I did flick off the switches. We have zero spark on any of the coils. We know that it's got, it's gonna have good compression. We know that it's got spark. So now let's check, let's get these plugs back in. And uh, I think we'll check for air and then we'll get some fuel on it and check the oiling system too. I have to admit, you know, when I started looking at this one, I started checking out all the Kit Foxes and the new Kit Fox 7s. It's a pretty cool airplane. I, I could see us getting one. And the one I was looking at I really liked is the one with the Yamaha Apex, the turbocharged, like 180 horsepower or 200 some horsepower. There are some really cool machines. This tank right here is like a holding tank. So the fuel will come down from the wings into this tank and then it feeds the engine from this tank here i'm assuming it's uh just in case you know depending on what angle you're at you're flying at it's going to have plenty of fuel in this container right here so you're not going to run out of fuel in the air which uh, is a really good thing let's just pull this off we'll take a look at the carburetors we'll make sure that they're working The air filter looks to be, it's a K&N air filter and it's, it's in great shape. Like it almost looks new. <laughs> it sounds like, it's so windy here today, it sounds like the hangers are gonna fall in. If you look down here at the carburetors, they're actually open right now. So let's see if I pull the throttle back. The slide should go all the way down. And they are, so if you look here, these are the uh, idle adjustments these carburetors there's two carburetors so they have to be equally adjusted um, which there's some measuring you can do there and there's some flow checking you can do but there's an adjustment here and adjustment here working properly and they even look like they have a little bit of film from the two-stroke oil being in there that's why their cylinders look so new although it's been sitting because every time you run one of these because it's a two-stroke literally it's feeding oil into those cylinders so when you shut it off there's oil inside the cylinders you really rarely see a two-stroke engine that is that is sealed up and taken care of with any type of corrosion or rust inside the cylinders because you always got oil in there this is almost too easy i'm not running into anything really bad do you want me to dump some bird poop on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's what we're missing. It feels kind of weird because everything is really going well and everything is looking really good. We need like, we need some bird poop or a nest or two so I can feel better about everything. Yeah, everything, everything looks, everything looks really good. I, two of these coils aren't firing and it looks like there could be a little bit of a questionable wiring going on here. One of the things I'm a little worried about is this right here. So if you look here, this is the grain of the wood, but we're definitely gonna have to have this checked because the last thing that we want is uh, this prop separating here. So while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab some oil and put some two-stroke oil in there. And I'm also gonna look it over and make sure I don't see any kind of leaks or anything. So we got a little racing bean oil. I used to uh, run this in race cars I used to drive. And a little different getting antifreeze to put in an airplane. And then we do have some gear oil just in case that 
that gear drive system needs uh, needs some oil. And we're definitely gonna need this if we're gonna start it up. Get this air filter on there and get it nice and tight. See if this actually has any coolant in it at all. So I see a little bit of coolant down there, but it looks like it could use some. It's got this cool little overflow bottle here, and I don't see anything in that. You should always see a tiny bit in one of these overflow reservoirs. I'm gonna go ahead and top that off. All right, so really the next thing we gotta do is we gotta get these the fuel tanks hooked up. If you look, there's a connector here and a connector here. It's a quick connect, but the one, like I showed you earlier, over there is broken. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm going to stick a screwdriver in that end, tighten it up, and we're not gonna use that left wing tank. We're just gonna use the right wing tank. We're gonna get some fuel in there and you know, and we're gonna fill it up, maybe just quarter tank or something, enough to get down to this sub tank. And then we'll make sure that we do have fuel getting over the engine. Then we'll put the plugs in and we'll check the gear oil and then we'll try to start it. But Harrison and I were talking and Harrison said, you guys are probably a little bit curious on if the avionics work. But I think it's the fact that Harrison is curious, curious to see if the avionics worked. And I am too. So let's get in here and we'll power everything up. Let's see if they work. It, it had a little power. It was down though. So let me go ahead and I'll get this avionics master on or the master for the airplane. So we have AV, FP, ST, nav, GPS. Uh, we got fuses on everything. This is a really cool little panel. I like these light up. So let's go ahead and there's avionics power and the GTX 327 is lighting up and it went out. So my thought is we probably don't have enough juice. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab something to, to get power in here. fresh new battery installed. Uh, we'll wait to put that on just in case we drain it down and have to put a charge on it. All right, let's see if that did indeed power it up a little bit better. Ooh. All right, GTX, GPS. Hey, hey, look at that. Yeah, the 196 works. So this will work once we get outside. It's, it's, it has to be able to see because we're in the building. Let's see if, where are the comm ports at? This is the, this goes back to the antenna. I found where they come out. Where at? Right here. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so for about the last 10, 15 minutes, I was looking to see where the connection was and right there it is. But it looks like there's only a connection for the pilot. So we checked everything out with the avionics. Everything seems to be working really well. We won't really know if the radio works till we get it outside. So next what we gotta do, we gotta put a little fuel in this tank. I'm gonna change some of the fittings around over here because of that one fitting being broken over in the other wing. And we're going to get the spark plugs back in here. You know, we already know that the fuel pump, the electric fuel pump works. Even if the manual fuel pump doesn't work, the electric fuel pump is going to work. And we'll be able to see if we get fuel down here to the gas escalator. And there's actually some really stale old fuel in there, just a drip or two in there right now. So, so I'm going to just take another quick look around and just make sure there's nothing I'm missing. I don't want to add fuel to this and have something start leaking out. So but it, it looks good. I should be able to just go ahead and unhook that wing over here. Just have this wing hooked up for now until we get some new fittings. But I am gonna go ahead and take a picture of this. So I remember how it was routed before. 
in the future here we're going to be replacing all these fittings here they have some plastic fittings i don't really like them i'd like to see some metal fittings especially when it's over your head and there's fuel in there and we're going to replace all these fuel lines too with just some new lines because these are a little bit hard you can tell they're getting a little brittle when we do the condition inspection on the fox we're going to go over the whole thing well that's not good so if you guys look here if you look at this hose see how dry crack that is uh it's one of the one of the reasons i mean you get an airplane you're not familiar with you got to go through all this stuff. There's a ton of stuff we got to look over on this because it sat for so long. Pretty much anything rubber or plastic or anything like that is going to get all torn out and replaced. All right, so let's get these plugs back down in there. Get my torque wrench on here. Perfectly torqued. So we'll probably be replacing these spark plugs with a BR BR. AES from NGK because it has a resistor plug in. I would assume when this was built, they probably didn't have the resistor plugs. What that does is there's a built-in resistor inside the spark plug and it'll keep it from having RF interference, which would definitely be bad. I'm sure it comes across on the radio on this. So obviously at some point I will come back and I will torque these and make sure they're at the right torque values. We'll actually torque the head nuts too and check those, make sure they're correct and go over the whole thing as far as torque values. I would not fly one without it being torqued. All right, let's check the, uh, the gearbox fluid, make sure that that's good. All right, so it has two marks here. There's a mark here and there's a mark here. I think when I was reading the manual, there is a high and a low. Let me make sure I have those mags off. So we're going to check the fluid and make sure we got fluid in the gearbox. All right, plenty of fluid in there. And that fluid looks to be new. Uh, a little later on, we'll definitely go ahead and change that and just get fresh fluid in there. But I feel good starting it up. All right, so everything's buttoned up. Everything looks really good, so we're going to pull it out. We're going to lock the wings back in place. We're going to get some fuel over in that right wing, make sure it gets down to the tank, and then we're going to see if this thing will fire up in the, for the first time in I don't know how long. So it could be, I mean, it was built in 80, around 84. Um, I have to look at the logs. It could have been fired up uh, back in 1990. How many years ago would that be? Oh, that'd be like 30 some years ago. So this thing might not have ran for like 30 some years. I don't know. Um, after I look at some logs, some of the receipts, I'll have a little better idea. But as you guys can tell, it has been sitting for a long time. So, so we'll see if this thing fires up. There's no reason it shouldn't. I'm just really surprised we didn't find any any worse things so far yeah oh wait a second look there's a little bit of fuel in the lines so a little bit of old fuel line so there's a primer in here okay so that was just taking fuel and sending it right down in here so i might have just flooded it we'll see with with old fuel i didn't think there's any fuel in there Some flyers. I got it. You got it. Yeah. Man, dude, I'm the jar opening champion. Hey, Harry with the win. All right. So that does keep the tank pressurized. Those little nozzles there. You see the fuel coming up right here. It does still sound empty. I don't know if that pump should be quite that loud. There's one way to tell if it's going to fire up, and that's to try to fire it up. Let's go ahead and give her a brake check. Oh, yeah, brakes work good. Man, this thing's just swaying right and left sitting here. All right, let's power this thing on. Let's see if it will fire up. 
fuel pump. All right, that's the throttle off. We'll give it a little bit of throttle. I got the brakes on. We get a choke on this thing, which is a little bit different. We'll turn the choke on. I did prime it, so I doubt we'll need it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull back on this stick. All right, let's try this out. <laughs> All right, well, she fired right up. I'm so excited to fly this thing. I actually fit in here pretty good. And she shut right off. That was like way, that was, that was way too easy. Well, she did shut off though, so let me figure out what that was. I'm gonna see if I can keep this thing running. the voltage is charging it's got a negative draw so there might be something here where the ignition the uh, charging system needs some attention because this should be this should be up here there we go so the battery that we got is a little low if we turn these on we get a positive amp flow and we get a positive charge so that battery is a little low it is going to charge up though, so we'll be good to go. So we got water temp, the exhaust temp, the, I think it needs a sensor, but water temp's coming up, so that's good. That means everything's flowing. I was a little worried about that, having an old water pump. We got positive charging. You can tell that the older style strobe lights takes a lot of energy. I mean, if you look at it, it takes it down to a zero amp charge, so. We'll replace that with an LED system that that takes a lot less voltage. Yeah, so everything worked out really well. <laughs> like looking inside that engine, it looks so brand new and I just figured it was gonna run good. If it wouldn't have looked that new, I would have pulled the carburetors apart too and looked at the floats, which is something that we gotta do, but man, that it fired right up. It fired right up. You could smell that old fuel. I think after some of that old fuel got out of there. Yeah, I think it was good to go. I think we got to see if it'll taxi. What do you think? <laughs> it's a little dirty, but I think she'll clean up real nice. Traffic Kit Box One is taxiing up to two nine Chester County traffic. All right, guys. So this thing actually runs really, really well. Pretty much everything works on it. There's a couple things we got to do to it yet, and we have to annual it, and we have to. Okay, so there's a lot of things we got to do to it yet before we can fly it. But I really think. We got one heck of a deal. I want to thank Sam for hooking me up with this deal. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Really excited about this airplane. This will be a really cool cruiser and I can't wait to get it flying again. So if you guys haven't done it yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you like our videos. Give us a thumbs up. And of course, turn on notifications so you can see the next adventure that is Rebuild Rescue. Take care.